I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a runecast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past runecasts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. At each solstice, I post the full edition of the weekly rune. This one was poignant enough that I'm also releasing it in full as this episode of What in the Weird. I hope both the blog transcript and this podcast meet the need of the season. On that note... I don't know what my attentiveness to the podcast can be going forward. I truly enjoy doing it and am not at the point of writing it off. However, my Patreon community and that of The Spirited Path, as well as writing my upcoming book, Eldering Well, are my priorities. And everything else will be as it can be. Thank you for understanding that. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. Now, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the runecast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the runecast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, You can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of The Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. The Weekly Rune for the week of December 12th, 2021. The body keeps the door. Yera is the half-month rune through December 13th. Ewaz is the intuitive rune. Uru's reversed indicates survivor's message to us, and the sodalite wanted to come along for the ride. Red right to left is Yera, Ewaz, then Uru's reversed. We near the midpoint of the runic year with Yera, stretching ever closer to December solstice. These solstices are portals, times that the light plays funny games with our awareness, where bright isn't as luminescent as we may be thought, and shadows aren't as hidden. We tend to look at these times of earth shifting in relationship to sun as extremes. We tip forward, we pull back, we're just along for the ride and scrambling to adjust. It can be really hard to internalize a dance the planet is doing with its primary star as something that is happening within and with us, and not just to us and externally. Current Buzz says body is the filter for these experiences. It keeps the score, meaning it remembers trauma in a way that doesn't let us decide how we participate in such stellar dances, let alone everyday life. But what if instead the body is a door, the threshold to a completely different experience of stellar self that we grow into from our extremes? This week's runecast covers all the bases of inner cosmology and describes how we can support it for the best during this solstice season of shifting darkness and light. Learn more about this seasonal progression and how to draw its insights into the personal spiritual path in runic book of days. Meaning year, yera is the rune of harvest, or as I say, of hearth accounting. 
It's the time that we assess how the year went, what we can take from it, how we approach things differently next year to better align with our needs and desires, and what we need to take out or bring in to better grow. Yera comes after difficulty with the opening winter trio of the second et. It comes after a time of adversity that brings trauma, if not PTSD, CPTSD. What we've gone through with Hagalaz, Naudis, and Isa left a mark, and that mark is part of how we move among. We can't ignore that it's there despite that settler culture wants us to. It brings the dichotomy of pretending the wound isn't there and business as usual alongside demonizing it as a flaw that leaves us forever less. We get no help from settler culture regarding trauma. It's true that trauma marks the body and changes us forever. And until it's allowed to speak its own truth and find its new relationship to personal power, trauma can be very disruptive. Because it feels scary, the messaging that gets culturally reinforced about trauma is that feeling and expressing it should be avoided, that realizing how we're in relationship with it is to invite more trauma. Settler culture capitalizes on that fear and continues to inflict aggression to distract us from understanding and living from the power of our trauma. We're a civilization built on a pattern of rewounding and denial, so much so we often can't realize when our trauma is making all the calls. It becomes an unconscious motivator, and we think it's just how we are. This week's RuneCast offers insights into how we make space for our trauma in a way that lets the body be the door to our power. Over the pandemic, the runes have edged around the CPTSD that we're living. Through this time, I've fielded loads of notes and emails from folks who can't figure out why their rituals suddenly stopped working, why their allies became distant, why they can't engage trance or meditation. My Instagram has some short videos that go into more detail around these changes in spiritual practice. The oversimplified reason for these and other shifts in how we engage our spiritual paths is life is really hard right now. Even for folks who weren't bringing trauma into the pandemic, business can't and shouldn't go as usual. The runes reiterated this very clearly in the gaslighting of societies trying to get back to normal that no longer exists and wasn't all that great for many of us to start with while ignoring that where this can land doesn't exist yet. The reality is most of us were bringing unresolved trauma into the pandemic, and the double down of everyday life now demands that we get to work on reconciling what of it we can and finding the new way we function beyond it. That's how we survive this time. For this reason, the winter runes have been particularly caustic this year, and I hear they occurred with intense eclipses. It's not because we're fucking up or not doing enough. It's not because we can't get with the program. We're doing a shit ton more on a daily basis than we have, maybe ever, and there's no program to get with, externally at least. What's changed is we're feeling the weight of it all more. And when we are this overwhelmed, everything points back to the foundation. Tend the inner cosmology. Eat as well as possible. Sleep well. Exercise as is possible. Engage tools that quiet the mind. Tend the etheric field. Seek out the dream team. The big rituals can't be done right now. They overtax the aforementioned needs. The big soul travels need to wait until the field says it can support their embarkment and refueling. The only program to get with right now is the internal one telling us to get our house in order. The runes this week offer a primer on how the body keeps the door and how, like the earth and sun in solstices, we move back and forth in an elegant complex dance with selves. It touches on how we take care of the levels of our inner cosmology and how we can start that dance more on our own present terms. 
CPTSD is power that can't find itself amidst the continued upheaval of the nervous system. It's there. It wasn't diminished by the harm. It is, however, changed because of it. And our healing process has to teach us how we can not only come into new relationship with it, but continue to let relationship unfold with both our power and our trauma the way it needs to. In the way that solstices have us re-examine our relationship to our light and shadows, their intensity reveals the post-traumatic places that haven't been able to clearly articulate their needs. Eclipses do this also in more nuanced ways. In this runecast, we approach solstice beyond the linear black and white rhetoric so that not only we understand the sore parts of ourselves that have been speaking, but in the crack between the regular light and felt shadow, we have the opportunity to let them live through their power. They do so not as wounds calling the shots based on old terror-filled wiring, but from synapses rooted in our present circumstances, drawing on our full system to respond differently. Let the harvest inventorying of the internal infrastructure begin. With our movement into Yera, take stock internally of what can be addressed at this time and externally consult how the dream team can help. Harvest is the time to relish what has been accomplished and to line up resources and support for how to take those accomplishments to their next level. Ewas, as the rune to describe how we can best work with Yera, suggests we take it deep. How deeply we can go at this time fully depends on how taxed we're feeling in the everyday, and that depth may change one day to the next, one hour to the next. Honor it. Knowing where we are and what we can accomplish is also part of Yera. It's not pie in the sky time. Rather, it's time to be centered in who we are and what we can do within our boundaries of now. As the rune of horse, the vehicle for taking things spiritually deeper, Ewas is often construed as meaning soul travel. And if that's doable, go for it. However, from an animistic standpoint, taking things deeper can be as simple as remembering that everything is in relationship with us and remembering to act accordingly during our day it can be just the depth that we need right now. It may be all that's needed. If reminding self that we're in relationship with the nature around us is reinforced by sitting outside for a few minutes, that's enough depth. If skittle-sized rituals are deep enough, that's fine, but do them. If soul travel isn't possible, come back to its temple and tend it. Nourish the body the best you can. Speak to the entire system of self what it most needs to hear. Find the ways that deepen what self is already doing. Find the sacred in the everyday, because if it isn't there, where is it? Ewaz covers the soul care, and sodalite addresses the needs of the mind. Associated with the vel hafala, it emphasizes energy tending that supports the highest consciousness available. That's an awesome goal, though we can't safely get to those higher vels until our lower ones are well supported. Sodalite specifically brings our awareness back to our beyond-earth supports, to the watchers, the allies who anchor our work here in something bigger than ourselves. However that tending can happen, this week know that in taking care of self at the most elemental of levels, how our life force comes into our body is part of how we find balance in our nervous systems from trauma. Urus reversed through the voice of Survivor gives all of this rune cast its nuanced shading. Where Yera is advocating for us to be active in tending our tactile needs and accomplishments, and Ewaz asks us to acknowledge where we can take tending those needs soulfully deeper, Urus reversed brings us back to the body. Urus is the rune of the soul in form. 
It's the point that universal consciousness realizes it's landed in a body, in a strata of being that can manifest like nobody's business. It's also the point that we realize how limited the power of that consciousness feels from inside a body. Soul and form is the greatest challenge of being on this planet. And under current settler system values, we get acquainted with the hardship of it quickly and ongoing. That conundrum is humanity's greatest grief and could be called our first trauma. It's the part of us that misses a home it can't name and has no particular memory of. It's the part of our awareness that remembers accomplishment beyond our imaginations, yet feels marginalized by form. It's the root love-hate we all carry some version of in just being who we are. The impact of realizing how real here is, is not to be underestimated in the tensions of our day-to-day, particularly during the pandemic. We feel such power at the level of consciousness, self-awareness, yet continuously push up against the limitations of our body in carrying out the will of the unconscious. Reversed, this rune is asking us to come back to where we might feel ill-fitting in our body. It's a horribly uncomfortable thing to consider, yet we have the skills and resources to do it well. It's also asking us to remember that we're survivors. The push-pull that is our base experience of soul and form is why the body is the key to our awareness of self as survivor. It is the door to our soul and trauma is what guards that door. Survivor shows up as trauma, the tiny sliver of awareness that largely goes unnoticed in the everyday until it bleeds into difficult feelings or arises from triggers, yet is illuminated front and center in times like solstice with fire in the head and shadows at the fore. While the mind can dissociate and the soul can flee beyond, the body is right here, right now, always. It feels and holds it all. It holds our trauma. If we agree that we're in relationship with all things, then we're also in relationship with our trauma in some fashion. If we agree that our deepest well of power comes through our unconscious transconsciousness, then we're always in relationship with our unconscious. That also means that our trauma and our power are in relationship with each other independently of us. Trauma and power are in relationship with each other independently of us. That mere suggestion of relationship can mean they're also allies, our allies. What if we were able to bring our awareness to those relationships? What if we could change how we are in relationship with each of them? What if where we're comfortable saying the body is the temple of the soul, we could say the body is the door to the soul? Could we sit with the body on those terms, even with trauma, maybe even especially even with trauma? All that wiring that fires when we don't want it to or how we don't want it to. All the coping skills to keep things preciously safe, to get through the day, to soothe the brain. What if we could change how we're in relationship with them such that they worked in favor of our sovereignty, not from shadow or light, but from both? What if we could take the savvy of our trauma along with the sacredness of our wisdom and make an entirely different harvest? Drop the projections and the ideas of the body, the brain we wish we had. Tend them and tuck them gently in with the deepest care possible. Tend the body, soothe the mind, find the sacred in doing both of those things for now because it is there. It was always there, and it's our greatest power in being here. We don't get to enlightenment by pushing past our trauma and shadow to some false perception of power and light. We get there by taking it all with us on the journey. We start that journey by stepping through the door 
into the experience of the body. It's hard, it's messy, and it's the only true portal we have into our deepest power. The prompts for this half-month rune are, how are you in relationship with your mind, your soul, your body? What relationship do each of those have to trauma? When you bring your awareness to those relationships, who do you become? Who can help you change how you're in those relationships to best support your power? As with each week with the Galder, do it the way it resonates for you, whether that is emphasizing only the first syllables, both syllables, do it the way you feel it in your body. What we're working with this week is yera, yer, yera, yar, yara, yer, yera, ewas, e, ewa, urus, u, uru. For me, it sounded something like this. Yera, ewa, uru, 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 yera, ewa, uru. As we've discussed, the Galders resonate in such different ways. Um, this one, for me, I don't feel it in my energy body in quite the way I usually feel Galder. I feel this one activating what I consider the Valkyrie aspect of my inner cosmology, which would be what some people call sacred self or high self. And, and even a little bit more than that Valkyrie aspect, but kind of more into the, the Godi soul part, which would be like the transpersonal consciousness that, that's never born, it never dies, it always is. And frankly, it's pretty damn nice to feel that. Thank you for your support of the Weekly Rune and of my work. And I hope that this December solstice finds you well. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season, or you just want somebody to bounce your ideas off, feel free to email me at kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, at soulintentarts.com, or you can call into the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and various other podcast platforms. And you can learn more about me, runic book of days and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com or on instagram at kelly soul arts i'm kelly and this has been what in the weird